Today we are talking all things Trader Basics. Now we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Traders are an extremely important part of Seven Days to Die. They allow you to sell items that you no longer need, purchase items that you do need, and also send you on quests to earn XP and Duke's Casino Tokens. So today, we're going to take a look at the basics of the trader system. First up, let me introduce you to the five traders in Seven Days to Die. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, starting from my left, moving to my right. First up, we have Trader Joel. Trader Joel specializes in armor. So if you're looking for a good armor set, you definitely want to find yourself a Trader Joel. Next up, we have Trader Jen. She specializes in medical supplies. So if you need to get yourself healed up, swing on by Trader Jen's and pick yourself up some medical supplies. Next up, we have Trader Bob. He specializes in tools and vehicles. And then we have Trader Wrecked. He specializes specializes in food and seeds, and also at being a gigantic jerk. Seriously, Trader Wrecked, you suck. And last but not least, we have Trader Hugh. He specializes in weapons and ammo, and is also a gigantic jerk. So these are the five traders that are currently in Seven Days to Die. Now, one thing you will notice, if you look above their heads, you'll see this little icon here flashing. When you get close to a trader, this icon actually appears on your on the display. You'll actually will actually you'll actually see this in the world once you approach a trader. If you go to your map and you zoom in, you'll actually also see the icon on the map as well. Now, unfortunately, because I have all five traders spawned right next to each other here, the icons kind of overlap on top of each other. But generally speaking, you would actually see this icon right there on your map as well if you are close to a trader. So now. Now let's go ahead and talk to Trader Joel here and let me show you the basics of the Trader menu. When the Trader menu pops up, you have three different options. You have May I See Your Inventory, Do You Have Any Jobs, and Never Mind. Let's take a look at each of these options, starting with May I See Your Inventory. Once you select that option, you are going to come to this menu right here, which shows you the items that this trader has available. You notice on the top here, there's a whole bunch of different tabs that you can select. The one that is automatically selected is the All tab. This will show you every single item that the trader has in their general stock. To access different pages, all you have to do is hit the arrows here and you can page over. It looks like Trader Joel here has three pages of items for us to purchase. You can also narrow down the selections by clicking some of the other tabs. Uh, you can look at all of the clothing he has available. You can look at the ammos and weapons, science, resources, food, building, chemicals, and tools and traps. And the last section here is the secret stash. All traders have have two separate inventories. They have the general stock, which covers all of these items here, and they have their secret stash. This is a secret stash of items that is separate from their general stock. So when you come to a trader, if you don't find what you're looking for in the general stock, don't give up. Head over to the secret stash and see if he has what you're looking for. The menu also has a search bar, which is pretty cool. So instead of having to page through all of the items, you can actually go to the search bar here. Let's say we're looking for books. We're looking for volumes. So you can take a search for volume. Nope, he has no volumes available. Well, let's go to his secret stash and let's do the same search. Does he have any volumes available? And look at that, he has two books available for purchase. So definitely utilize this search bar if you know exactly what you are looking for. Now let's take a look at actually buying and selling items to the trader. In order to purchase something from the trader, it's pretty simple. Just select what you want to purchase and 
click the buy button. Click that button there, you will purchase this item. The purchase price is on the top here. It's also right here, see under the cost column here. So we have a level three, a quality three baseball bat for 2,167 Dukes. As long as you have that amount of money in your inventory, you can go ahead and purchase that item. Just click the buy button, boom, good to go. You are ready to roll. Now let's say you want to purchase multiple items. All you have to do is select the item that you want to purchase, click the over arrow here to select how many you want to purchase, and again, click the buy button and you will purchase that item. There's also the purchase all button that you can, you can click here. Boom, that automatically goes from one to purchasing every single one that he has in stock. He has four tripwire posts. If we wanted to purchase all four of these, it would cost us a total of 115 Dukes. Selling is very similar. All you have to do is select the item that you want to sell in your inventory and then put in the amount that you want to sell. If you want to sell one, you can sell one. If you want to sell all 1,000, you can sell 1,000. Or if you want to sell, let's say 500, just type in 500 in the box. Boom, click the sell button and 500 of that item will be removed from your inventory in return for the sell price, which is right up here. Another thing that I wanted to show you is if you hold the shift key and select an item, it will automatically fill in the maximum amount that you can sell. So we have a thousand robotic turret here. Let's go ahead and click off of that. And if I normally click on it, boom, it just makes it so we can only sell one. Well, if we shift click on it, boom, it'll automatically have it set to sell the maximum amount that we can, which for this stack is 1,000 or 1,980 Dukes. So use that shift button if you're looking to sell everything in that stack. Now let's take a look at the second option. That is the do you have any jobs option. Once you click on that, you're going to come up with a list of five available quests. Every day, these quests will reset. So you can do up to five quests quests per trader per day. Now I'm not going to go too in depth on questing at this time. I have a separate video coming out that will go really in detail on questing, but this option is where you accept quests. Once again, the quests reset every single day. So if you take a look at his available quests and you don't like what you see, just wait until the next day and his quests will reset and maybe you'll find something a little bit more to your liking. When selecting a quest, it will tell you the tier level, tier one through five. It'll tell you the quest type. For instance, this one here is a fetch quest and it will tell you how far away and in what direction the quest is from the trader. So for instance, this top quest right here is a tier one fetch that is 497 meters to the south. And the third option here is the never mind option. So if you decide, okay, I'm not quite ready to look at his inventory. I'm not quite ready to look at his jobs. Click the never mind option and that backs you out of talking to the trader. Boom, so we are back into the world right now. And the same holds true for every single trader. The menus are the same. The only thing that, dif that differs is the items that they have available and their specialties. Every single trader specializes in certain goods, so they will have more goods of, of one kind than, than some of the other traders. So uh, I went through their specialties already, but keep that in mind when you are looking for certain items. If you're looking for vehicle parts, make sure you hit up Bob. He's more than likely going to have what you need. So now that I've shown you the basics of the trader menu and introduced you to each of the traders, let's go ahead and take a look at each of the trader compounds. Every trader has their own unique compound and they're the same every single time. So if you recognize the structure, you'll know which trader that you are dealing with. Now, before we move on and I show you the trader compounds, I did want to take this opportunity to say, if you're finding this video helpful and or enjoyable, join the Sav Nation by clicking that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. I release videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. But for now, let's go say hello to the traders. 
Let's start off with Trader Joel. Trader Joel's compound is actually pretty cool. He lives in this like tree house kind of thing here. So if you come across this structure here, you know that you are dealing with a Trader Joel. So we'll head inside. One important thing to keep in mind, Trader compounds are 100% protected. Everything in the POI area is protected. It cannot be destroyed. All trader compounds have an, a working vending machine. Vending machines reset every single day are, and are a great source of food, drink, and candies. So definitely hit those up. All the traders also have access to crafting stations. Now we lucked out here. Our, the forge here is actually working, but that is not guaranteed. Most of the time you are going to come across destroyed crafting stations. Hello, Mr. Bunny. How are you today? For instance, the cement mixer here is destroyed. We have a destroyed workbench and we have a destroyed chemistry station. Now let's head inside and say hello to Trader Joel. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, we did not luck out. He has a bookcase behind him that can be searched from time to time. And also his cash register here is also not searchable. That's a random chance. Sometimes they spawn in searchable, sometimes they do not. But once you find him, come up and talk to him, sell him some stuff, buy some stuff, and definitely take a job. But let's move on and say hello to Trader Jen. And this is what Trader Jen's compound looks like. So let's go ahead and head on in. And again, once you find the compound that looks like this, you know you're dealing with Trader Jen. Again, Trader Jen has a working vending machine. She also has each of the craft crafting stations uh, worked around, and there's lots of trash and stuff to loot in Trader Jen's compound. Traders do not mind whatsoever if you go through all of their stuff and steal what you can. They don't care. You can take anything that's lootable, loot it up, and take what you can. So we'll go inside and say hello to Trader Jen. Hello, Trader Jen. You might want to get some antibiotics for that um okay well i'm perfectly healthy but thank you now you'll notice behind trader jen she has three wall safes unfortunately those are out of reach you can't reach them and her cash register is not searchable again that's a bummer inside here there's really nothing else to to search or to loot so it's pretty much just trader jen inside the little trailer here but definitely run around the compound and loot up everything that you can next up let's say hello to trader bob and here is is Trader Bob's little location here. His POI looks like this. So anytime you come across a trader station that looks like this, you know you are dealing with Trader Bob. And he lives in like a little storage unit, so there's a lot of stuff to loot in here. Again, he has every single one of the crafting stations littered about, so definitely hit up those. They're not guaranteed to be working. Actually, most of them are usually destroyed, so that's a bummer. But he does have a lot of lootable stuff in his compound. And again, he has a vending machine right outside that resets every day definitely check that out and let's head inside and say hello to bob hey bob how you doing buddy all right so now you'll notice this cash register is lootable so if we wanted to we could loot this up and take the dukes that are inside also he has a gun safe behind him and you can break into this gun safe he does not mind at all you can't like bash into it but you can pick the lock so if you have lock picks kick kicking around give it a try loot it up it usually has has some pretty darn good loot inside. But that is Trader Bob's compound. So next up, we unfortunately have to go say hello to Trader Wrecked. And this is what Trader Wrecked's compound looks like. Let me warn you guys in advance, Trader Wrecked is a gigantic jerk, not a nice man whatsoever. But again, you have access to a vending machine here. You have uh, all the crafting stations uh, littered around the compound here. Definitely go through it and loot what you can. He does not mind if you take it. Plus, he deserves, I mean, he deserves to be robbed because he is a gigantic douchebag. At least wipe that shit off your boots before you come into my shop. Case in point, what did I tell you? Trader Wrecked, you're a joke. Behind Trader Wrecked, he does have a bookshelf and a safe, but unfortunately, they're out of reach. You can't reach those, can't break into them. It's a bummer. And his cash register is not lootable as well. Inside here, none of these shelves are lootable, which is a bummer, even though they do have crap all over them. But definitely hit up his compound. There is a lot of lootable items all over the place. I mean, there's rotting trash 
stash like right here at the base of the steps so definitely go through here and loot up everything you can but let's leave trader wrecked this guy's a miserable piece of crap so we want to spend as little time as humanly possible with this jerk unfortunately we have to go say hello to another jerk trader hugh and here is trader hugh's compound this compound is probably my favorite it is awesome him and trader joel are kind of tied in my opinion for the coolest little trading post but this is what trader hugh's outpost looks like let's go ahead and head inside and take a closer look look at this thing guys isn't it cool oh man and there is a ton an absolute ton to loot in this place up front here you've got your vending machine and you've also got an underground area in the well here you can actually go down there there's stuff to loot down there he's got his crafting stations kind of all over the place definitely give this thing a thorough look because he has a lot of lootable items there's actually even a couple of munitions boxes in this poi lots and lots of stuff to loot his forge is in here and he also has a kitchen area right over here that you can actually find some good stuff early game you can find wrenches and cooking pots and all the early game stuff if you're lucky you can actually find it right here at trader hughes he also has a gun safe that you can reach you can unlock that from here pick it and loot it up and again he has a cash register but unfortunately it is not lootable and he is a gigantic jerk so we're not actually going to talk to him but this POI is massive and there's so many things to find. The, I mean, the upstairs here, there's stuff to loot. Outside, there's stuff to loot. There are hidden areas all over the place. There's the underground area. So definitely thoroughly search Trader Hughes compound once you find it. Loot up as much as you can. I cannot stress enough, folks, just how important the traders are to Seven Days to Die. The ability to buy and sell is very very, very important, but the quests could be even more important. They give you an awesome ability to earn experience and money at the same time. Plus, while you're completing the quests, you get to loot POIs, getting more and more stuff that you can either keep if it improves your current loadout, or sell right back to the trader for even more Duke's Casino tokens. The traders are awesome. Each one of the traders specializes in a certain type of good. While they all will have varied merchandise they will have a specialty set of items that they will have more of than some of the other traders one more thing that i need to mention about traders is that their stock resets every three days so we start on day one that means they restock on day four seven ten thirteen sixteen nineteen and so on so keep that in mind when you are out and about visiting the traders. If they have something that you really, really want to buy, but you don't have enough dukes, check their restock day so that you can make sure you earn enough money to purchase that item before their stock resets. Once it resets, that item you've had your eye on very well may no longer be in his or her stock. Do not discount the importance of traders in Seven Days to Die. They honestly can can be the difference between life and death in this game. I hope you folks have found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did and you'd like to see more, I've created a very special playlist of game mechanic tutorials that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.